How does avoiding my emotional experience ruin my relationship? Yes, again, this one is a difficult one for most people to face because <clears throat> they have a tendency to believe that their emotions are what cause problems in their relationship yes. rather than um, their emotions being the, the cause of problems. The avoiding the avoid, emotions. Avoiding yeah. emotions being the cause of problems in their relationship. So what we really need to do firstly is define carefully what we mean by avoiding the emotions. What we're, we're not talking about avoiding emotions such as anger or other things like that. <laughs> yeah. What we're talking about is avoiding the real emotional feeling we have within us at any point in time. In other words, what is the truthful emotional condition of myself as an individual? When mm -hmm. I avoid that truthful emotional condition as an individual, and avoid feeling it, ex experiencing, expressing it, yeah. then I'm causing a major breakdown in my relationship with myself yeah. and also in my relationship with my partner. Yeah. Yeah. So now why would I do it? Well, I do it because I, have to, because I believe I have to maintain certain conditions. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm afraid of certain emotions like shame and guilt and, and I, I don't want to be crying all day and I have certain judgments of emotion. And there's a whole slew of reasons, and we won't go into mm -hmm. all of them here, as to why I may choose to suppress myself emotionally or suppress my partner emotionally. Yeah. But either one of those two things that I choose to do will cause a major degradation in my relationship. My relationship won't have the potential of growing mm. because it's only by releasing these unhealed emotional parts of myself or releasing the healed parts of myself and expressing them. In other mm -hmm. words, if I have a desire truly expressing it as mm -hmm. it really is rather than suppressing it, that I'll actually be myself. Yeah. And when I'm myself, I'll now have the ability to present myself as a gift to my partner. Yeah. And isn't that the forming the basis of my relationship? Part of my relationship is not only presenting the gift of my love to my partner, mm -hmm. but also giving the gift of who I am truly, yeah. not facade, not injuries, but who I am truly to my partner. Yeah. Right. Now, obviously, to, do, to, do, to give myself as I am truly to my partner, I have to work through my facade and work through my injuries in order to get to my real self to present that. Yep. And so that means I'm going to have to be open to experiencing all sorts of emotion. Mm. So if I shut down the experience of all sorts of emotion, myself to of my own, mm -hmm. then myself I am never going to be. I'm only going to be a fiction mm -hmm. and that I present to my partner. So I'm never presenting myself to my partner. If I expect my partner to do the same, I'm actually wanting my partner to not present herself to me, yeah. but present a fiction of herself to me. Yeah. Now, that's obviously never going to result in a very truly binding, long-term, everlasting relationship. Yeah. So... The ability to feel and experience emotion in a loving way is a key part of growing your relationship mm. with anybody, mm -hmm. but in particular with your partner and God. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Okay, so the reasons we might do it. Yes, let's yeah. look at them. <laughs> <laughs> You've already mentioned I might avoid my emotional experience because it helps me maintain this fictional condition. Yes. To myself and to my partner. And I might actually want that. Yes. So I've got to give up the desire for it, but I want it for some reason. And usually the reason is because I don't want to experience the pain. Pain. Yep. 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 Okay. It also helps me make my partner responsible for that painful emotion, doesn't it? Of course it does. Yep. Any pain that I have within me that I expect to live with, I'm also expecting you to live with mm -hmm. it too. And if I don't want to feel it, then I'm definitely like you to take responsibility for it. So it's of even off my plate. Yeah. Well, I'm even wanting you to meet my addictions about it too. Yeah. So that's what creates my addictions. If I refuse to feel my true emotional condition, addictions are automatically created. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so it's a major reason why I've created addiction. Yeah. Yeah. And we've talked about addiction in a previous Question, question about how destructive it is to our soul condition yeah. and therefore destructive to our relationship yeah. but this is what we do yeah. and we do it because we're trying to avoid being emotionally overwhelmed 
about all sorts of issues and matters that we need to feel about and we refuse to feel about. Yeah, mm. yeah. And on the other hand, when I'm trying to avoid my partner's emotional experience, I'm trying to maintain a fiction. I don't want to be sensitive to his personal pain. Yes, I don't want to feel what he really feels. Mm -hmm. Now, I put to, to the audience that if I don't want to feel what you really feel and you don't want to feel what I really feel, mm -hmm. then what kind of a relationship <laughs> are we having? <laughs> it's not much of a relationship. It's not. Is it? Like, so, so we're just fooling ourselves if we're having a relationship thinking that I don't want to feel what he feels and she doesn't want to feel what I feel. And, yeah. and, and, and what's going to end up there? Uh, only emotional distance. Mm. It's the only possibility. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's distance. And then I'd like to just ask you to clarify this issue of taking responsibility for each other's pain. Yes. Because basically, if I'm shutting down your emotional experience, I'm going to wind up taking responsibility for your pain through the workings of our relationship? Is that how it works? Well, then, it'll work on both ends. Um, if I shut down my emotional experience, I'm forcing you to take responsibility for my emotional experience in that you have to compensate. In order for us, for us to have a relationship, you will have to compensate for the things that I'm unwilling to address inside of myself. Yeah. Now, that's a very selfish thing to do. It is. Very selfish. And if obviously you did that to me, I wouldn't be happy. So why would I do that to you? It's not ethical mm -hmm. to do that in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, ethics don't seem to have much of a part in most relationships, but, but they should do. Yeah. And, and if I was ethical, I would never want you to pay a penalty of any kind, physical, mm -hmm. emotional, spiritual, of any kind, sexual, yeah. for my choice to remain in my injury. Yeah. And yet... That's what I'm forcing you to do by living with you while I'm hoping to suppress my emotional condition. Mm. I'm forcing you to do that. So in a very concrete way, if I don't want to feel my fear mm -hmm. and I want, but I want you to be in a relationship with me, I'm going to expect you to make concessions for me in our life whenever my fear might be triggered and I want to do something other than feel it, do yes. I take a different action or change our life or, or even behave in a certain way that yes. helps me avoid my fear, I'm expecting you to accept it yes. and to modify and yourself to, accordingly. And to compensate yeah. for it. Yeah. Very selfish behaviour. Yeah. 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 So when you choose to not take personal responsibility for your emotion, you are being very selfish mm -hmm. because you are now imposing those emotions on other people and they have to in order to maintain a relationship with you accept your imposition yep. the only way that they can't is to leave you which of course would cause you further problems right <laughs> and yep. and obviously cause them distress too potentially because they if they love you they won't want to leave you mm -hmm. they want to be with you right mm -hmm. but there are times if we truly love a person you're going to have to leave them while if they have these demands yeah if they have the demand to shut down emotionally for myself, if I have the demand to shut down emotionally for myself, I am harming you mm -hmm. because I am forcing you. I am forcing your will to either leave, you've either got to leave or you've got to stay and do what my emotional shutdown demands. That's the only choice is available to you to have a relation. It's the only choice I'm giving you to have a relationship with me. Yeah. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. If I shut down your emotions, so now I'm talking about my personal desire to shut down your emotions, I am purposefully trying to stop you from progressing. I'm personally trying to stop you from ever being happy. I'm personally trying to stop you from ever enjoying your life. Now, how cruel can I be? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. By shutting you down emotionally, I am trying to stop you from a whole heap of wonderful things that are your potential if I wasn't in your life yeah. and yet I'm there saying, I want to be in your life, but I'm going to shut you down. Yeah. I want to be in the life, but I'm going to force you. I'm to because I don't want to cope with this stuff coming out, out of you. Right. It's very selfish. Behavior. It is. And, and yet it's so, so, so very common, isn't oh, it? Of course. It's very a, common. A, a woman starts crying and her husband says, oh, please don't cry. You don't need to cry. Come on, I'll cheer you up and, yeah. and you know, Terrible make you feel behavior. better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And yet most people see that as him being a good guy. Well, most women even see that as him being yes. a good guy. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's actually terrible for their relationship. Mm -hmm. It's causing her to not be able to release something that she needs to release. She needs to release yeah. it. You need to help her release it. Yeah. Having compassion will certainly help her release it. Yeah. But telling her to shut down won't help her yeah. release it. It'll close her down. Yeah. The yeah. opposite of release. Yes, and right. women do it very routinely with men when it comes to anger or grief. Yes, that they f most women are extremely terrified when their men cry. Yeah, just terrified. Yeah, because they want the men to be strong and look after all the stuff that's happening that they are terrified of. Yeah, and 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 when the man's crying and feeling vulnerable, they don't. They themselves start to feel vulnerable and weak, mm -hmm. and they themselves start to be, become very very afraid. And when they become very afraid, they start to close him down, try to shut him down, try to even imply that he's being weak now, stupid or whatever. And, and now there's no, they're being very selfish, of course, mm -hmm. but they're also now imposing their desire upon him to shut down. Now to remain in an open state, he has to leave. Yeah. There's no choice. He can't stay in his relationship that he wants yeah. and, and be open. Yeah. That's the choice he's being given. And it's a terrible thing to do to your partner to do that. Absolutely. It's a, it, we've seen that happen so many times. Yeah, yeah. And it's a terrible thing to yeah, do. Yeah. And, and it is much worse than even most people believe. And even the received partner on the receiving end believes it's the good thing to do. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Your beliefs of love are so severely distorted that you believe that someone shutting you down is a good thing. Yeah. Like that's how distorted your belief of love is. If yeah. you believe it's a good thing, you are severely damaged with love and you need to get God's perspective of love if you're ever going to have a good relationship. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love that you're stressing it so much because it is so, so, so common and people engineer their entire lives around um, avoiding managing. their emotional experience or managing their partner's emotional, emotional experience. experience. Yeah. And it takes so much time and effort. It's so detrimental to the relationship. Yep. And it's very detrimental to your future. Yeah. To your soul condition, it is very destructive because every new injury that is added to your condition has no form of release. That's right. There is no chance of it being released. Yeah. So all that can happen is that your condition will degrade. Yeah. There's no release, so your condition can't improve. The only way your condition improves is by release. Yeah. So, so you're consigning yourself to a continual degradation of your condition. Now, over 70 or 80 years, the average person has a whole thousands of events to release. Yep. None of them being released means that they are all going to have to be released at some point in their future life in the spirit world. Yeah. Right. And there's a subsequent pain and suffering of what they choose to do out of harmony with love by not releasing them. Because yeah. it's only our unhealed emotional condition that causes us to go and do something even worse. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, we've got the penalties of that on our soul. And this is why the majority of people who are on emotional shutdown end up in the hells of the spirit world. Yeah. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. Well, I think you've told us how it ruins a relationship. Yep, pretty plain, we've, I think. We've made a couple of notes extra to that. Um, and perhaps I'll just, I'll say everything we've written here because sure. some of it you've already mentioned and sure. it doesn't hurt repeating it. Okay. Avoiding personal emotional responsibility creates more painful experiences since the law of attraction attempts to force the release of painful emotions. Yes. So we have the pain within us. The law of attraction is going to keep... Uh, coming at us to help us in release stronger that. and stronger doses yeah to yeah. help us release that pain you know the average person believes completely the opposite of that they believe that by suppressing their emotion they are controlling their painful experiences yeah but what they're actually doing is increasing them yeah that's well, sad that's such an important it's point. actually yeah. doing the opposite of what you think yeah and then so the law of attraction comes there's more painful events to try and help trigger this causal pain yep. and you then we more. use we suppress more we use more addictions which creates more, more pain badness and more and now we're creating are evil yeah yeah that's like, right so it's not just that we're avoiding our personal emotion anymore now we're actually creating evil in the world yeah it's a 
Uh, Very bad for us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very bad for us. And hopefully this is an incentive for everyone at home yeah. to, you know, really start to look sincerely at... At the importance of these particular principles, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Avoiding personal emotional responsibility creates an imaginary state within the relationship. Of course. Yep. That's pretty well, plain, kind of I think. Looked at that. Yeah, yep. It's pretty clear that if I'm faking my emotions and you're faking yours, that we've pretty much got a fake relationship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And if I'm just trying to suppress yours and suppress mine, then the then we've only, both got a suppressed relationship. There's no, as we said in a previous question, the flow of emotion is what enables intimacy. Yeah. If there's no flowing of emotion, there's no no passion, no desire. Yeah. This is why people end up just cohabiting. Yeah. Without passion, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Avoiding personal emotional responsibility creates an emotional bartering system. Yes. I'll do for you what I don't want to do for myself. You do for me what you don't want to do for yourself. So I've now created evil. Yeah. I've now chosen to barter, which is now creating addiction, which is now creating evil. I'm choosing to harm you. I'm choosing to harm your will. I'm choosing to not be loving to you. There's a whole heap of things I'm choosing by making that choice. Yeah. And as soon as I do all of those things, my condition degrades. My condition degrades, our condition degrades. Mm -hmm. Our relationship degrades. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, it's going to be destructive to the, to the relationship. To the relationship, yeah. Okay. Avoiding personal emotional responsibility causes the relationship to stagnate, which you've just really mentioned. Yes, uh, there's, I suppose there's a difference between degradation and stagnation. Mm -hmm. and, and we've talked about the degradation, but the stagnation is I'm happy just to do for you what you want. You're happy to do for me what I want. We're, we're not, we're generally loving people. We don't try to destroy other people's lives or yeah. destroy each other or any of those kind of things. We get along quite well. We're not always attacking other people. And under those circumstances, our condition will remain stagnant yeah. in the hells. Yeah. Uh, you know, we might not be in the depths of the hells because yeah. we're not, not have engaged a whole heap of more unloving behaviour, yeah. but we'll still be in the first sphere of the spirit world, unable to progress until we get out of the codependent yeah. addiction. Yeah, and I can think of a number of couples like this who feel they're very pleasant with the people around them. They've mm -hmm. got enough means so that they're comfortable financially, so, so there's so not a huge They don't amount. have a large amount of addictions being triggered, you know, triggered, into yeah. anger. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. the, But the addictions with their partner, that's their primary relationship, the person they spend the most time with. Some yeah. of them are even retired. Yeah. They have this, this pleasant enough lifestyle where they do things that they find enjoyable. But and they don't. They rarely argue. They feel pleasant to. They behave pleasantly towards each other and towards other people. Yeah. But underlying it all are some very key codependencies. Yeah. And and these things. This is where the couple is just probably going to stay pretty stagnant. But gradually, yeah, they'll there's probably, a degradation, probably stay they? stagnant uh, or degrade just slightly yeah. their entire life. One or two, both of them will get diseases or die. You know, yeah. of course they'll both die eventually because yeah. of old age, because that's what happens when you're in codependent addiction as well. Yeah. So they'll both die. They'll both arrive in the spirit world, probably stay together for a bit longer <laughs> in yeah. the spirit world. Yeah. Both of them will not have a relationship with God. Yeah. Because the codependency prevents a relationship with God. Once they realize that they want a relationship with God, then they'll probably start growing. Yeah. Or they'll start seeing the possibilities you know, in their first sphere condition, they'll, they'll have people visit them and go, look, you can be in a second sphere condition if you deal with this. And then they'll mm. realise that it's their own condition that causes them or prevents them from being in a better place. Yeah. And under those circumstances, the selfishness of that <laughs> will possibly motivate them to start addressing some of these emotions. Mm. But, but those kind of people, uh, ind indolent people, mm -hmm generally uh, stay a long time in spheres of the spirit world. Very rarely do they grow very rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, they, they might stay uh, 200 years in the first sphere and 100 years in the second sphere and 500 years in the third sphere and 1,000 years in the fourth sphere. And they might still be in the fourth, fourth sphere after three or four, five, six, seven thousand 7,000 years because they're just enjoying where they're at yeah. rather than having a desire to grow. Yeah. And uh, it's a sad thing I observe because these kind of people, it's very hard to motivate them to growth. Mm -hmm. I, I do notice that in couples who they both might have a keen, or so called keen interest in divine truth here on earth, but because their day to day life is so comfortable, what they would call comfortable, yep. they 
we watch them over like five, six years, they find it that they're not well, that motivated. Most of the time we haven't seen them make a single change in that time, not yeah. a single one. Yeah. You know, or if they have, it's very, very slow. Yeah. Very slow. And um, so there's not a lot of incentive with current discomfort. Not only that, they haven't begun their development of their relationship with God because if they had of, they would probably feel more of a stronger motivation to develop that relationship than they currently have. So, so for couples like that, would you say that there's a, what would be their next step to feel more sensitive to them, to the truth of what's happening? To The trouble is they are internally in a state of semi-pleasure mm. of their own condition mm -hmm. and uh, not seeing the truth. But there's little you can do to help them until they personally can see that there is a potential of being happier. Yeah. You see, for a lot of people, it's only the unhappiness that drives change. That's right. And as soon as they become happy, they no longer change. Yeah. Right? What I'm suggesting is that bliss and happiness is a, is a thing that can continue to grow like forever. Mm -hmm. so, so once you have understand in your soul and in your mind that actually, while you may believe yourself to be happy right now, there is a lot brighter and stronger places of happiness than where you currently exist. And once you really believe that, then you may try to approach those places mm -hmm. by working through the things that prevent you from being there. Yeah. So for people who are sort of what I would classify as relatively happy, um, it, it's the relative happiness that often causes them to remain stagnant. Mm -hmm. And stagnation in itself is not growth. It is a, and, and you've got to ask yourself, well, if you have the potential to be blissfully happy, but you're only sort of happy, <laughs> surely the potential of being blissfully happy is worth striving for. Yeah. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people who get into this indolent state on earth and just feel that once they have a level of, and fear uh, as mm -hmm. well drives that state, you know, because they were afraid of losing that state. Yeah. But once they get to a level of, you know, where they're semi-happy semi or relatively happy or mostly happy mm -hmm. or what they believe is mostly happy in comparison to what happened in their past, yeah. um, then a lot of people stop striving. Yeah. And when you stop striving or seeking, more truth can't come to you and therefore more bliss and happiness can't you can't receive it. Mm. Now, you know, what you, can you do about that? Well, you need to realize that there is more bliss than you can possibly conceive of that God is offering you. Mm -hmm. And it only requires you working through some things. That's all it requires, not much. Mm. And in fact, once you've worked through the few things that are blocking you receiving God's love, it only requires that you receive more of God's love which is not a trauma at all. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing to experience. So surely you should attempt to try it, mm. even if you believe yourself to be relatively happy right now. Yeah. Yeah, um, so yeah, stagnation emotionally is a problem because it causes the people to believe they're relatively happy and unfortunately causes them to remain in a stagnant condition, whether that condition be good or bad, good in comparison to the average person on earth or bad, it doesn't really matter. What matters is, are you prepared to grow for the rest of your existence? Because if you are, you can, you can experience the supreme happiness that comes from growth for the rest of your existence. But if you're willing to stay in stagnant conditions for long periods of time, then obviously you're never going to experience in, in the next few years the blissful conditions. Mm -hmm. It'll be thousands of years or tens of thousands of years or hundreds of thousands of years before you do. Yeah. And my suggestion to you is, well, wh why put off something for a hundred thousand years that you could have in 10 years? Yeah. Like it makes no sense. <laughs> but I can understand the, uh, the reason why people choose to do it when they're afraid. Yeah. You know, and when I say understand, I still don't agree with it because yeah. it makes no sense emotionally to live in a condition of semi or relative happiness when absolute bliss is your future. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, well, back to avoiding personal yes, yes. <laughs> responsibility. These are all the results of avoiding them. Yes. Yeah. Another result is that it causes unconscious, 
unloving behaviour driven by our unfelt emotions. Yes, when I say unconscious or unfelt, what I'm talking about is that because we're suppressing our emotions, we are not aware of the emotion that drives our unloving behaviour. And so what happens is the emotion still drives our unloving behaviour. We're just not aware of the cause of what's, you know, of what's being driven. So, so we act out unloving behaviour and, and don't know what the cause is and yeah. don't understand why we're doing it. Yeah. Right? We're doing it because we're suppressing the awareness emotionally. Yeah. The reality is there's no real thing as unconscious behaviour, mm -hmm. right? There's no real thing as subconscious either. It, it, what it is, is this state where we're unwilling to be aware, right? And it requires the development of our will to become aware. Yeah. And once we develop our will to become aware, we will be aware yeah. of what we're doing. Yeah. And then we won't, we can choose differently. Before then, we'll be unaware of the cause and we'll do whatever the cause suggests. Yeah. And if the cause suggests, well, you know, let me sit, sit here reading the paper while my wife, you know, pre pre prepares every meal for me. Mm -hmm. If that's what the cause suggests, that's what I'll do. Yeah. But, it, uh, but it is unloving behaviour. Yeah. That's why sooner or later our wife's probably going to be upset with us about it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Avoiding personal emotional responsibility <laughs> causes too many problems to list in this discussion. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I, was, I was there listing this thing for this session and going, my goodness, we could go on for months and months yeah. about this, yeah. <laughs> about yeah. what it causes. And also what it stops you from enjoying as well. It doesn't only cause a whole heap of negative effects, it also stops you from enjoying a whole heap of positive things. Yeah. Like it has yeah. this double whammy, yeah. as the saying yeah. goes, you know, yeah. on, our, on our life and on our relationship. Yeah. Right? Well, even just when you've talked about this in the, the principles of how the human soul works, if we're suppressing our painful emotions, our pleasurable emotions are also suppressed. Correct. And our capacity to experience pleasure is suppressed. diminished. Yep. So, so what we're doing, we're, by suppressing our emotion, we're also suppressing our sexual enjoyment. We're suppressing our happiness, the bliss of our happiness. You yep. know, it'll be this much instead of this much. Yep. Our sexual enjoyment will be this much instead of this much. Yep. Everything will be this much instead of this much yep. because we're suppressing the emotion this to this much. Mm -hmm. and, and the negative effect of the, our life is we don't get to experience ourselves as we truly are. We don't get to enjoy ourselves as we tr uh, were created to be. We don't ever get to grow to what God created us to be. Because that's very intensely about our emotional growth, yeah. our, our ability to receive more and more powerful feelings from God is what will cause us to emotionally expand. And so if, we, if we're unable to do that, if we've, we've, we're consigning or controlling our emotional expression to a certain level, then of course we are unable to experience the bliss of these other conditions. So it, it has a negative effect on us and also it also destroys a positive effect yeah. as well. Yeah. And so we, we really can't say enough about, again, about emotional expression and its importance in our day to day life. And the ability to be sensitive to our emotions yeah. is something you desperately want to encourage within one, in yourself and in your and partner, your partner. Yeah. rather than destroy. Yeah. yeah. And if you do that, you'll have a very good relationship. But if you don't, well, you've got some very bad habits to break there because yeah. it, and it is a worldwide bad habit. This one, yeah. uh, emotional suppression inside of relationships are a very strong motivation mm -hmm. to, for on both parties, usually in relationships. And, and it's very destructive to having a great relationship. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Good the truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another one bad habit down. <laughs>